Hey everybody, it's the Action Tater here, and today I have a remake of my DX Tori tutorial for recording with the X264 codec, as I know there were several problems with the original one, and today I'm just remaking that so that people can properly record with even better settings that I found since I last made that tutorial, and uh, let's get started. Alright, so first of all, you're going to need to open DX Tori. Since you're at this tutorial and you've been able to find it, I'm going to assume that you've also been able to figure out how to open DX Tori. So once you've done that, you're going to need to install the X264 codec. So if you do not remember how to do that from the last tutorial, you can either go and watch that, or I'll show you right now. You can just open up your internet. Oops, sorry. Cannot type today. Go to Google. Then search in X264 codec. And then any of these websites will work. Uh, I use free codecs personally, just because it's easy to use. And note that if you don't see the codec appear in DXTory after you restart your computer or restart DXTory and you've installed this, then you may need to install the 32-bit vision instead of the 64 or the vice versa of that. All right, so when you first open DXTory, that's probably going to look like this, with your profile set at default. Now, DXTory is a smart program, and it'll automatically detect anything. Like, so if I was to open... Call of Duty or Minecraft right now, it would detect that and then that would appear up here. Obviously I have a crap ton of games that I've played with different settings, that's why all these are different, but um, it should automatically detect even if it's, like if it's on, it, if it's on that, it should automatically go to Minecraft if you open Minecraft. But when you first open DXTory, it'll be at default, so I'll leave it at that. You shouldn't need to mess with this at all, although should you have problems with the XTory finding your program, you may need to adjust this. Alright, so in this window, there's not really anything that we need to do. This is just what's going to pop up when you open your game, it'll pop up information about it. Alright, so in the next tab, we have our uh, recording settings. So, as you can see, I have my non-recording status color to green, or, sorry, blue, and then my recording to red. So basically, what that means is that this number right here, which is my frame rate in the game, that's going... Oh, it's 69. <laughs> anyway, that number will... Um, it will change, obviously. If you're lagging, it'll probably be, be below 30. And then once you start recording with your hotkey, which I will go over later, it will turn a different color, and it should also bring up... It, well, it should have your... is something that says file FPS. Clock is going off. And I should have something that says video FPS. All right. Other than that, you can change these colors quite easily. Uh, not really anything that I need to go over because, again, you should be able to figure that out on your own. Folder. Obviously, you can change that. This was a Let's Play that I did with a friend named Brian, so obviously I have it named accordingly. So, if you do add another, just add another, we'll add desktop. You want to go right here to the benchmark tab. You want to just run your benchmark. Now, since I'm recording right now, and I have a very slow 5400 RPM hard drive, it's going to be quite bad. The best speed's around 120, although, of course, if you have a solid state drive, you can get far, far higher. Although 75's, not too bad, so now you want to press OK. And this doesn't really matter, this is just how much it's going to write to test. Um, the bigger, the more reliable, the bigger, the longer it'll take. Now this isn't super important, but if you have it set to like 500 or something, you can only write it 50. Then what's going to happen is your video is going to turn black and it's going to get all messed up. All right, so in hotkeys, uh, you can easily change these hotkeys. So when you're in the game, the first one is going to start your movie capture. I have mine set to numpad minus simply because that does not interfere with any of my game controls. Uh, to reset one, just click on the thing and press the key. Or if you want to get rid of it, just press that little X over it. All right, now here is where the magic happens. So it should, yeah. Are you, once you're in your, sorry, once you're in your little camera tab called Movie, you want to check Use Default Setting. Next, you want to find your X two sixty four H whatever code. Now you want to click on that little button right there. This should bring up a window that looks like this. Now there's several different settings that you can use here to get the the best quality with the lowest file sizes but I personally am going to use single pass bitrate based so right there 
then I'm going to set this to 7500 kilobits per second. Now, although this may not be the same quality as FREPS, it'll be smaller, and then, of course, when you edit it in Premiere, or, uh, yeah, Premiere or Adobe Vegas, uh, you can't do this with more simple editors, but then you can just set your output bit rate to 7500, or if you convert with Handbrake, you can also set that to either 7.5 or 7500. Of course, the 7.5 would be in the megabits, but, uh, all right, over here, it's nothing that really matters that much, despite what people will, despite what people will tell you. However, I just set mine to basically 88 dia full pel 16. None of this stuff is really that important, although if you do feel that you want to copy my settings exactly, then you can uh, go ahead and pause the video right now. All right, so over here, again, not important stuff except for your threads. So if you have a 8-core processor, you're probably going to have 16 threads. If you have a 4-core, you're going to have 8. Uh, generally, if you just go to uh, cpubenchmarks.com, find your CPU, click on it, and then it'll tell you how many threads you have. I'm not going to do that simply because it'll make me sad when I find out how bad of a processor I have again. Alright, so audio, nothing super special. You can just do plus to add an audio stream or minus to get rid of one. Once you have it selected, I have mine set to my headphones. And over here, I have it set to my Yeti stereo microphone. Other than that, you want to set this to PCM or if you have it installed, uh, MP3. And then you want to set this to either 48,000 hertz or you can set it to around 41. However, you do want the 16-bit and you want stereo. Since my microphone only records at 48,000 hertz, I'm only going to set it at that. Although if I was to set it at 192, yeah, it'd sound nicer, but it'd also be really big files. Other than that, that concludes the tutorial, so please like, favorite, and subscribe, guys, if this helped you. And goodbye. I'll see you all next time.